if you don't mind, what, what's your rent? Uh, seventeen hundred a month, bro. God Almighty. Oof. Yeah. Why don't you own a home? I know. That's why I'm bro. talking about it. <laughs> How many? So, so let's do it this way. Let's back up. How many years have you been renting? Uh, we moved to Greensboro in 2019, and the first apartment we went to was like 950 a month. Yeah, and you see, you step up. Yeah, and then so, we were like, okay, let's go to this other apartment, and then it was 1500, 1600. And so then this is the other problem with renting that people don't get. Yeah, renting is kind of like car ownership, mm. and the fact that people will upgrade their cars very often, and I've noticed that renters will upgrade their homes a lot more. Mm. Right. So you have literally started off at nine hundred dollars a month. And you've worked your way, you've doubled it. Yeah. Right. And you've worked your way into a seventeen, seventeen hundred fifty dollar a month place that you don't own. Right. Yeah. Whereas if you'd bought a home that had a nine hundred dollar mortgage in two thousand nineteen, yeah, you said, man, you'd have bought it in two thousand nineteen. You'd still have a nine hundred dollar a month mortgage right now. Yeah. Or even a thousand dollar a month mortgage, and you'd own it. Right. And your property would probably let's say you, at a thousand dollars. So it's we estimate six hundred per hundred thousand. Right. Six hundred dollars a month. Per hundred thousand, that's a, just a quick way, you know. So if you um, if you had a nine hundred dollar budget, let's just say that you bought a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar house, okay. In two thousand nineteen, there's a very very good chance that two seventy five was probably worth like four twenty five four fifty right now. Yeah. And you still got a nine hundred dollar month mortgage, yep. right? So now you've got your nine hundred dollar mortgage. So you're you're saving uh, eight hundred bucks a month in rent or versus renting. That's that's ninety six hundred bucks a year. You're living you're living for almost ten grand a year cheaper. I know. And you own it. <laughs> and you own it. And on top of that, the thing went up by, you know, hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. Like you've you literally could sell it. Are you're living for ten grand a year less than what you would be. Yep. And you got a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars that you lost. That's opportunity cost. Right. This is why I don't understand renters. Yeah. I don't. I, and I'm, I'm not done. dogging them. I'm oh, not. No. I'm just like, it just doesn't make any sense. I, I mean, the thing was for me, I think we rationalized it like, oh, we don't know if we're going to live here. That's long. everybody does. And then they, next, uh -huh. next thing you know, they blink and they've been there 10 years. Yeah. It's like, we don't know if we're going to live here. And then now I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere else. So I'm going to so, stay here. So, and I think uh, if you said, hey, you know, we don't know if we're going to be here, I think you got to really narrow that in. You got you to say, okay. What factors are am I questioning that I don't know if I want to be here? Right? Is it your family's too far away? Is it your there's no opportunities here? Like really dial it in and go. The I would live here forever, except my family's ten hours away. Yeah. Well, that's a real challenge. So you need to you need to make that decision, but you don't don't wait three years to make the decision. Like I know. if you care that much about being near your family and they're ten hours away, then you need to go ahead and make the move and go there. Yeah, you know, like so I, for me it's like really dial in what's the objection and try to make that decision as short a time as possible i think the biggest one was she was in school so we were like oh well when she gets a job we'll go somewhere else and then she got a job here so <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah and and see then I, that comes back to this you know let's go back to it though let's say that in 2019 instead you said you know i'm, I'm gonna buy a house mm -hmm. and you spend the same 900 bucks a month i have dreams where i've done that yeah so and I wake up and i'm and two years later upset. you guys decide to leave sell it you sell it. And in, in that scenario, you would have made money. Yeah. Or you rent it. And rents, if you look at 2019 versus 2021, what happened to rents? That $900 a month place probably would be thirteen, fourteen hundred bucks a month. I know. By that point. Maybe fifteen hundred bucks a it month. It is. I looked at it a couple of months ago. I was just like, it's the same. I mean, it's I mean, it's not the same as where we are now, but yeah. I mean, it's not that big of a jump. Yeah. So so or you rent it. Mm -hmm. So two years from now your your situation changes. You know, if you if you went back, then you made the decision in nineteen by twenty one. You say, you know what, we're leaving, and you put it up for rent, and now it's paying taxes, insurance, and mortgage, and it's giving you five, six extra hundred bucks a month. Yeah, on top of that to boot, right? And and you know, if you're you got to set aside money for the what ifs, right? You know, AC unit goes out, service repairs, miscellaneous things, right? But just set the money aside. You know, if your tenant stays there for for three years, you've set aside eighteen thousand dollars. And when they leave, if you got to spend five grand touching everything up and replacing all the carpet, oh well. You got to set aside, yeah. Yeah, you, you move on, right? Or or you sell it, right? Like, so and, can I buy a house today? <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely.